Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 37 of The Murder House by James Patterson and David Ellis. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Book 3, Bridgehampton and Sing Sing, 2012. Chapter 37, Sing Sing Correctional Facility, 30 miles north of New York City on the east bank of the Hudson River, houses nearly 2,000 inmates, over 55 acres of property up the hill from the lower level secured facilities, as cell block A, maximum A, one of the largest max security cell blocks in the world with over 600 inmates packed in 6 by 9 foot cells. There are murderers and rapists and sex traffickers and mob bosses and major drug dealers divided into fierce factions predominantly by race, the Bloods and the Crips, the Latin Kings and the Tr Trinidos, and the Aryan Brotherhood. If you belong to one of the gangs, they have your back. You're protected, but even that you're not really protected because the sins of the individual are the sins of the gang, and retaliation in cell block A is in a common essence counts four times a day. In the last eight days, cell block A has been on lockdown four times as the Latin Kings and the Bloods have worked out their differences the only way they know how. Guns are uncommon. It's by shanks and razors, anything that can be pried loose and sharpened into a weapon. The most of the injuries are inflicted. The first time Noah Walker walked into cell block A, he was overwhelmed, overwhelmed by th the sheer enormity. The cell block extending four stories high and so far from right to left that seems to be to be no beginning or end, just an endless wall of steel and chain link barriers. Overwhelmed by the noise, a deafening clamor of hundreds of caged men shouting radios playing gates slamming this is his home now on the top tier of a block gallery l seventh cell he will live in l7 for the rest of his life he will live amid a massive series of cages covered by the concrete and brick dome with windows and miraculously lit in very little light sunshine filtered through filth the polluted air the noise the solitude uh, hour upon hour spit in a cell no bigger than a normal person's closet in the 73 days that noah has spent here they had the effect of de deadening him killing his hope erasing his dreams leaving him numb Outside of the cell, the mess hall, the showers, the machine shop, and the prison yard, it's a different story. Noah is alert at all times, his eyes constantly moving about. Noah is not affiliated, the only real per a real option for a white guy in the Iranian Brotherhood, and he's not going anywhere near those racist mor morons. That makes him fair game to everyone. Stick a shingle to Noah's back or accost him in the shower or jump him in the yard, and nobody will retaliate. Noah is alone in every sense of the world and with every day that passes he finds that he cares less and less there is nothing for him here but the passage of time he is simply waiting for time to move along until he dies his tiny cell is barren of personal effects he hasn't built up enough in the commissary for a radio and no television is allowed he only he has only two personal items a photograph of Paige and a copy of his favorite novel the catcher in the rye in the photograph Paige is in, in noah's attic bedroom her hand up to shield her face from the camera and look a look of embarrassed amusement on her face strands of her hair curl around her cheek he likes this photograph because it touches all of his senses he hears Paige's voice don't take my picture he smells her the way he liked her best sweaty after sex he feels her hand on his arm while he tries she tries to keep him from snapping the photo with his phone page he will never see her again he told her not to come here and not to drive the point drive to the, drive the point home he told her he wouldn't see her if she came they have no future now and it's better she remembers him when life was good to hold the sweet memory close to herself rather than having her image of him de deteriorate slowly over the years as he grows harder more bitter he met yesterday with his lawyer who told him there would be a one month delay in getting his appeal on file noah told him that was okay he doesn't have a chance he knows that he has in no hurry to find out if his appeal has been rejected that's the worst part worse than the fear in the prison yard or the loneliness or the shame of being convicted of a double homicide the lack of any hope of any future of any meaning to his life will kill him if a shank in the neck doesn't which of those will come first he has no idea that is the end of this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.